Hey guys and welcome back. So I figured today it'd be kind of cool to go over the seeds that I grew in my garden this this winter and kind of give like a quick review over each of them and my thoughts around them. Um, as far as the garden goes, we're still doing good out there. We still have quite a few plants. Um, I'll, I can post a garden update here pretty shortly. So um, probably within the next few days, I'll do an actual garden update. But for now, we're going to focus on these seeds. So um, they're sort of in the order of my most favorite um, first, but let's just be honest, I pretty much love all these guys, so. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so the arugula, definitely my favorite. They grow extremely well. They're basically, they grow like a weed, super fast. Um, they, they have tons of growth, and whenever you cut, make any cuttings, they just explode with more growth at each of those cuts. So they have been easily my most productive uh, crop uh, growing this season, and I'm still getting tons and tons off of them uh, nonstop, even with frost hitting them uh, here lately. And then, of course, you know, November and October, we had just bad heat waves. So those, like I said, those, fantastic. Um and then this company overall, Baker Creek, also known as Rare Seeds, um, very good. Um, all of these had really good germination rates. I think the lowest germination rate were the carrots. Uh, they had, there were several that I noticed that didn't actually um, pop up. But other than that, they're they're pretty good. Uh, and then of course their prices are outstanding. So you you get. You get a lot of value for what you pay for. So I like this company quite a bit. Um, and then of course their seed quality, you know, you're, you're getting quite a few seeds for, for the price again. So um, at any rate, the bok choy, those are, again, those are very productive um, and also extremely easy to grow because they're used to a sub, they're, they're used to kind of a tropical environment. So they're used to humidity and, and higher heats. I think it's listed on here at 60 to 80 degrees. Um, yeah, 60 to 80 degrees, so the, I know those did, they did just fine with the higher temps. They, they might have gotten a little upset when it got really hot, but they did really good. Um, but so, uh, also, they do really good even with frost. You know, when the frost hit, we got down to 27 um, and 30 degrees and even 34, um, frost still hit. And they didn't even flinch, they didn't care. The arugula were a little upset about it, but they popped back after half a day. So of the frost, but um, the bok choy they just taste amazing. They're my favorite stir fry vegetable. Um, they're probably good in soups as well. I I'm not a big soup person, so I haven't had them in soups. But stir fry definitely, so good. Next would be the radishes. Um, simply phenomenal flavor. Uh, the these particular ones, the pink beauties, they've got a really good earthy flavor but also a decent spice to them not overboard but just a little bit um compared to anything store-bought i mean these are just miles ahead of anything you can get at a store and that goes for pretty much everything you're going to grow yourself but these seem to be the most the biggest difference to me um just they're they're really good um they grew pretty well uh the second batch i grew I tried to grow, none of them survived because we were having those extreme temperatures. Um, I planted them in October, I believe, and we were getting super high temps and heat waves and lots of rain and they just didn't appreciate that. And then we went straight from that into super cold. So none of them produced anything the, the second time. The first time they did really well. Um, like I said, they tasted great and I got probably they pretty much all of them germinated, um, but we only got probably like 70% of them or so grew big enough to actually eat, which is still fine. That's I got a good harvest out of them, so I'm still happy with those. Next would be this Kamatsuna, which these actually I got as a free seed in my order. And, um, you know, those turned out pretty surprisingly good. They grow really well. They do need a lot of soil. So I, I actually sort of experimented with these and I grew some in the one gallon pot, some in two gallon pots, and some in five gallon pots. And you could definitely tell a big difference. Um, the ones with more soil were doing better. 
growing a lot bigger, and especially the five gallon pot ones, those got um, substantially larger than all the other ones. And then um, after they got to a certain size, I got some bigger pots, and I think they're eight gallon, and um, transplanted a few into the eight gallons, and those did even better. So overall, they, they are very big plants. So I do say five gallon minimum for your pot size when you're trying to grow these, unless you're, of course you're growing it in the ground. But um, but yeah, these, they taste great. Um, they're kind of listed as like a uh, Japanese mustard. And so they're kind of in that family, uh, the mustard family, but um, their mustard flavor is very mild, uh, almost unnoticeable. And um, their leaf is very hardy and very thick and, and rigid. Um, and stir fries again it, it was very good in stir fries uh i also used it a few times as like a lettuce wrap so instead of having a burger with a bun i used um one of these large leaves and that was good i also used it as a wrap for like a burrito instead of having um a tortilla i had one of those and it did great for that that's how thick and hearty those leaves are um so yeah those are those are fantastic Next would be this lettuce, and um, it's kind of like a freckled lettuce. Um, it's This one is sort of like a romaine lettuce, and um, they did pretty good. They, I probably planted way too many per pot, and that was the biggest issue, and I never got a chance to thin them out because by the time, by the time they got big enough to thin them out, I just had so many plants and so many buckets, and I didn't want to buy any more buckets. I didn't want to you know, transplant any more plants, so I just had too many, but despite them having like 50 plants in each bucket almost, it seemed, they grew pretty well, and I got quite a lot um, of harvest out of them, and a lot of really good salads out of them, so unfortunately, lettuce does not like frost, does not like cold, so since we've gotten a frost a few times now, those are pretty much all gone, um, there, I've got a couple left that are trying to hold, hold on, but um, for the most part, those are all gone. And then, of course, when we were getting those heat waves, that lettuce did not appreciate that. They they are probably the most uh, heat intolerant, in my experience, out of all these, is the lettuce. And it did not like the heat at all because it was just day day in and day out, 80 plus degrees for a month there, really. So it was some pretty bad weather, like I said, in um, November. So, But overall, the lettuce was pretty good. Uh, the carrots, not too much to say about those. Um, they, I still have not harvested any of them. And um, they're probably getting close to where I can harvest them. But I'm trying to let them get a few more frosts in so they get, you know, maybe a little bit sweeter. And um, we'll see. And, and they can last probably a few more months in the ground, I would say. I'm no carrot expert, but they, uh, they seem perfectly happy and fine right now. And um, I just want them to get as big as possible before I harvest. So I haven't tried them yet. I will say they, like um, like I said before, most of them germinated. They were, but there were definitely several that did not. So who knows the reason for that? Um, could have just been the seeds. But uh, at any rate, we'll move on to the next one, which these are the um, the kale. I I do like this kale quite a bit. I only planted two. Or three, I should, well, I'm sorry. I planted like six and only three are left, I should say. Um, the biggest downfall, I would like to grow more next year because the biggest downfall is those uh, cabbage aphids. They're little, they're little tiny gray ones. They love them. They love the kale. And um, so I've gotten some harvests from them, but overall it's been difficult. And uh, so... They do taste great, and they do seem pretty resilient. Of course, in the cold, they, they're down. They can get down to, like, 10 degrees and be fine. So they've had no issues as far as environmental that way. They don't, the only issue I've had, like I said, is the, the aphids. And even spraying, you know, I've got neem oil that I've been using. And anything, you know, that mixed with some Dawn dish soap. And that's pretty much the only thing organically that I've, that knocks them out but that only gets them on contact so when they all infest the soil you can get everything on the leaf and on, on the surface and then the next day they're just coming back whenever the infestation is is that bad so it's really difficult to control them once you've got them got them that bad 
But um, yeah, next time I'll just grow more and hope that I'll have a few more plants that are less devastated. I mean, they're not, they're still got quite a few big leaves. It's just when they're completely covered in aphids and those things kind of stick on the leaves pretty well, it just becomes a major pain to try to scrub them off without damaging the leaf and it's just a mess. So like I guess I've gotten a few good harvests from them, but not as much as I would like. Next, this is the mustard greens, and these are fantastic. These are, I love these. Um, excellent flavor. Uh, they grow really well. These are another one that probably need a lot of soil. I grew them um, in some smaller buckets, and next time I'm going to grow them in bigger buckets, and they'll they'll probably be even better. Um, the best thing about these is they're very versatile, and I, I, ate them, I eat them all the time in salads. They're still growing now just fine. Um, I eat them all the time in salads because I just, I love that mustard flavor and they do have a little bit of a spicy mustard flavor. Um, there's other varieties that are more mild probably, but I like it the way it is. Um, and of course I have it in stir fry as well quite often and it's just great either way. Great cooked, great raw. So I, I love the mustard quite a bit and I will be growing those again for sure. And then the last thing over here would be the spinach and as I've stated several times, I've had nothing but problems with the spinach. Um, could be the environment. It's just too warm here, too many bugs. It, it's, it's had nothing but issues. I planted several. Um, I planted a whole bucket uh, full of them, and none of them, none of them came up. And might have been too warm, might have been too rainy, I'm not sure. But none of those came up. And then I planted three in my raised bed. Uh, th all three came up, but two of them died pretty much instantly. And then the third one, which is still alive and barely hanging on, he just has been ravaged by bugs, you know, like nonstop. You know, I put the neem oil on it, you know, it, it just, like I said, it, it'll knock off what's, it'll, it'll kill what's on it. But, you know, there's bugs just seem to love the spinach so much. It's just really hard to keep them off of it. Um, and then I think, again, it, Spinach is a really cold loving plant, so maybe it just doesn't get cold enough here for it to really take off. But um, I can I can highlight the spinach uh, in my garden update, but it is still, it's, it's doing a little bit better than it has been, but it's still just tiny and I haven't gotten a single harvest from it yet. So at any rate, uh, that's my overall review and thoughts on these seeds. And um, I have already, already have my seeds for next season in. And I'll just give you a little quick sneak peek. Here they are. And it's a very large stack. <laughs> so we'll be doing a, a seed video on those here soon to go over what I've got for the spring and the summer of next year, or this year actually. <laughs> and so uh, with that, I think we're going to call it on this video. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And I will catch you next time.